Hello, this is Albert van Eyck, and this is a short video just to give you an overview of, uh, of water remote sensing. How do we use remote sensing to understand the, uh, the water balance and the water cycle? Now, there's a, quite a lot of videos uh, uh, in this series that look at particular aspects of the water cycle, and, what, and, that, and that's because water uh, is really quite common uh, and popular application of remote sensing. Um, you know, as you know, 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by ocean, uh, and you probably know that we ourselves, like this astronaut, are about 80% water. There's, there's lots of water uh, and vapor and moisture and clouds in the atmosphere. Uh, so water is very uh, abundant, uh, hence the, the blue marble analogy. Uh, and that means that, you know, oftentimes we find ourselves looking at water and, and, uh, and can tell uh, some things about it. Now I'm going to go in this video just through a few applications and in other videos we'll, we'll, we'll look at those in more detail but just a sort of a bit of a listing if you like or some ideas of what you could do with remote sensing if, if you want to look at water. First thing is you could look at irrigation for instance. So here's a picture that you might have seen before in this series uh, basically showing uh, in green crops uh, that are being irrigated and you can tell that they're irrigated from these circles which are the pivot irrigation systems. Uh, for those particular fields. Um, so clearly we can use remote sensing to work out who's using irrigation water and that's one important application. More generally we can use remote sensing for water resources monitoring accounting. We can look at water balance modeling and work out, you know, uh, as this uh, this is a picture from one of the Bureau of Meteorology's reports on water resources. Um, for any particular year we can tell was it a wet year uh, or was it a dry year. This was a wet year because you can see a lot of, of uh, blue while you can't read the legend but you can take it from me. Uh, to do hydrological modeling such as that you just saw in that little map there, we need inputs and particularly, for instance, we need to know where the catchments are, where the rivers flow, uh, and we use remote sensing for that. We uh, want to know where ecosystems are that are sensitive to changes in the groundwater and in the surface water, and we can, again, we can use remote sensing quite usefully to look at where they are. Um, I, uh, uh, in the previous video, we already talked about water quality. There's obviously there, there's an application there too. Um, and then you can look at water as a natural hazard, so not as a resource, but as a natural hazard. So we might want to know where floods go, in this case uh, in the uh, in the um, Condamine Boulogne region. We can do some flood mapping by satellite and we can work at flood risk, for instance. Drought monitoring, we can use remote sensing to improve our estimates of, uh, of uh, how much moisture is in the soil. Fire monitoring, uh, you know, the fire risk depends quite, quite uh, strongly on the moisture content of the fuel, of the leaves and the litter and so forth. And we can uh, measure that uh, with remote sensing. We talked about weather forecasting before, but in terms of broader sort of earth system science, you know, the, the, the coupled uh, a global climate and water system, we can use remote sensing to look at all the processes that affect the global water cycle. For instance, here's a picture where uh, we've used GRACE, the, uh, the, that was uh, talked about in the previous uh, presentation to to improve model estimates of the global water balance uh, to tell us where uh, water is uh, increasing and decreasing, water stores are increasing and decreasing. We can uh, look at the relationship between water and vegetation as well and atmosphere feedbacks and so forth. Now a lot of the applications of satellite remote sensing in hydrology rely on the, uh, the, the their combination with a water balance model because while we can measure a lot about the water cycle there's also a lot we can't measure and we're going to have to model that. So typically we use them in, tip, in sort of a data simulation or a calibration context <clears throat> and we use a, a model to, uh, to integrate them with. Uh, and, and, and that's what this diagram aims to, to show and, and, and it shows some of the types of things that we can observe with remote sensing uh, that, uh, that can help us improve our estimates of the, of the water balance. So we talked about in previous uh, videos about precipitation, we can measure that with rain gauges that's here in grey, uh, the ground measurements, but with satellites we can also measure it uh, and we can also measure it using rainfall radar. Cloud cover, vapor pressure, air temperature, we, we can measure these things also with remote sensing. So the atmospheric side of things. Uh, we can, of course, we see a lot of, uh, of vegetation properties, such so as the leaf area, the, the land cover type, the, uh, the, the roughness of the surface, which is important for wind uh, effects on evapotranspiration, for instance, the albedo, uh, and we can see snow. Where, where is snow? We can even estimate how much snow there is up to a point. And then uh, going, going further down uh, to the, uh, the actual surface, 
uh, of the crust, we can look at uh, the soil moisture at the surface, we can use digital elevation models, we can even to some extent uh, try and infer some of the soil hydraulic properties. Uh, and of course we see surface water, we see floods, we see rivers, we see lakes, uh, and, uh, and, and, and the dynamics of those things uh, will also help us uh, make sure we get our modeling right. And then finally, in a, in a previous talk, you know, normally we wouldn't have been able to see anything of the groundwater using the electromagnetic spectrum, but thanks to the uh, GRACE satellite pair, uh, we can actually measure the total amount of water at the surface. And if we know the other parts, that means we can work out what the groundwater part uh, was. What, how, is groundwater increasing or changing? And we saw an example of that in the previous video. In other words, there's an enormous opportunity to use all sorts of different remote sensing to improve our, our, our water resources management and our, our water management. And so here's just a few examples of those of those different uses. So we here, here we see satellite remote sensing of rainfall. We see land cover mapping on the basis of uh, optical remote sensing. We see the shuttle radar uh, uh, topography, uh, topography radar mission uh, used to create a DM, uh, showing us where the river flows. Uh, you see soil moisture from the radar uh, uh, SCAT satellite. We see evapotranspiration estimated from uh, from uh, uh, remote sensing of Landsat in this case, uh, a, a higher resolution image, uh, maybe world view for instance of uh, irrigation areas showing us where the uh, who's irrigating their land, uh, a, a modus based flood uh, extent. Uh, you see the flood progression uh, uh, through the column uh, below here. Uh, and then finally, grace data being used in this case here to estimate how much groundwater has been extracted uh, in India. So there's a whole bunch of applications there. Uh, here's uh, a little bit more that the DEM we saw previously, uh, showing you the uh, the rivers like Mango again, the uh, the, uh, the uh, channel country uh, with all these river channels, and uh, here close to home the Murrumbidgee River. All this stuff is really useful to work out where the water flows, as you can imagine. And the same exists at the global scale. So previously we wouldn't have uh, had a clue what the uh, river systems uh, look like in far-flung places like the uh, the uh, upper Amazon and so forth. But thanks to uh, to uh, the uh, shuttle radar mission uh, and, and similar activities, we actually have a pretty good idea of exactly where the water comes from and where it will go. So there's a, a broad overview of the use of remote sensing in hydrology.